Hi everybody, Jacob here. Welcome back to the Fragrant Bunker. Today is the beginning of autumn. Actually, autumn began a couple of days ago, but uh, the weather is cooling down. It feels fabulous. And we're going to talk about the top 10 perfumes for autumn. My selection. Now, as my olfactive receptors evolve throughout time, I also change my preferences. So it's very fascinating for me to also look back in the past and see the years prior, which perfumes I chose, right? So, but for this year, and we're talking 2022, this is my selection, my top 10 perfumes for the, uh, for the, uh, for the season of autumn or fall. But before we get to it, subscribe to my channel here on the tubes. You can also join me on Patreon, Super Decaball spelled together for extra perks. Thank you to my patrons who have pledged. I live stream every Saturday on my main Super Decaball channel, so go check me out there every Saturday. That's why I pre-record the videos for my Essentially Deco Perfume channel. So let me cue in my live co-chators. <clears throat> Hi, everybody. Keep the chats on topic if you can. Lovebug says, wait, so does he do multiple videos? This is my first live. Yes, Lovebug, he does. And you just caught one of those segments. <laughs> so, you guys, it's fun for you who are watching me live right now to, we could play the guessing game, what perfume is coming next. But for those of you watching this video later on, I would love to know in the comment section down below what your favorite perfumes for autumn are. All right, you guys, let's get to the first one. Now, the first one, if you've been following me on my perfume journey on my channel, you, you're going to know I, you know, <laughs> I just unboxed it a short while. Where is it? I don't want it to spill, but it is. I'm obsessed. OK, so the first one, we're going to begin with the easy guess, and that would be Sycamore, the brand new launched Sycamore Parfum. I am obsessed. Um, obsessed. Obsessed. This is so beautiful. It's so beautiful. Now, you know I'm not a fan of the Eau de Parfum of Sycamore. I love the Eau de Toilette. However, the Eau de Toilette is no longer in production. So I was really sad using my Eau de Toilette. I stocked up on the EDT back in 2016 when they were about to be discontinued. But I, I use it sparingly because I know it doesn't exist anymore. I mean, what are you going to do once it's over? It's over. So I'm so happy that they released the Parfum, which is closer to the EDT than it is to the EDP. So again, I have something to look forward to and I have something that I can use a lot. And boy, have I been using this one. Uh, it's gorgeous. It's just so well blended. I, I can't even tell you. Oh, thank you for becoming a patron, Ricky. Actually, you know what? Let me just put a little drop. And I used to um I used to kind of do the little stick moment with the ceramic stick with this one. I just gave up on it because the stick takes out too little liquid. So it's gonna get my own dust in there. I don't care. I'm gonna use this thing up so soon. Oh my gosh. And it's so beautiful because it it rides that thin balance between hot and cold. So it's great for, for um, autumn because sometimes the beginning of autumn can still be warm, but it can also be cool. And this, the pure perfume, rides that thin <clears throat> line between cold and warm. It's just so beautiful. Plus, sycamore. Who doesn't know underneath the sycamore trees, Twin Peaks moment, obviously Twin Peaks is one of my favorite TV shows of all time, and I always re-watch it when autumn comes. So to have a sycamore perfume to go along with the sycamore trees of Twin Peaks, it's, it's just, I mean, you can't. You can't, it just it doesn't get much better than that. So that's one of them. All my members post that red room emoji right now. You best believe that's a Twin Peaks. That's my people. That's my people. Moving on to the next one. The next one is Divine. Now, I know that a lot of people in the fashion bunker or in the fragrant bunker don't like this one, and a lot of my perfume peeps are not a fan of this one, but I <clears throat> I think I'm the only one in this entire chat room that, that likes this one, and that's okay. You know what? That's okay. But I love my elixir, Sauvage Elixir, uh, or Elixir. Um, it's, it's, it's that good, you guys. I, what can I tell you? 
<laughs> it's that good. Oh my gosh. The oak moss in here. But you got to know how to dose this one. This one's a beast. You smell it days after you sprayed it on. I sprayed it on my hair the other day. Three days later. And after washing my hair, I still smelled the dry down. Like at the tips of my hair. It was insane. So don't just one spray is enough and it's so beautiful if this one if you know how to dose it by not over applying you're in heaven if you over apply it you're in hell and everybody else around you is probably also going to be there too because the magic of this one is really really almost nothing just a little and this is also why the bottle is so small i know that they've just released a bigger size as well they've released the ligs 100 ml but i think the 60 ml which is the og release is the most beautiful bottle and it has this kind of really concave inner part it, it's I, I i love this one i really really do and i know a lot of people don't like sauvage at all hey it is what it is i respect the people <laughs> Jesus, love it for you. I know, I know. Jesus, for example, really does not like the Sauvage range. Um, Elixir to me, oh my gosh. And it's dirty, just the right amount. And it's sophisticated too, just the right amount. Oh, it goes places. And it, it again, similar to Sycamore. Why is this one so good also in autumn? Because it rides that really beautiful thin line between cold and warm. It has a very cool, cold heart to it, but it has also fire in it. it. It's beautiful, beautiful. So this is my number two for autumn. Number three. Number three is, I think, I'm looking at them now. Yeah, I think, yeah, number three is the only one that has tuberose um, of my selection um, for autumn. And that would be, a strange type of tuberose, uh, a kind of a depressive heart. <laughs> it has a depressed heart, but it, it's a sophisticated, complicated smell from the early 2000s. So that would be Maora or Mahora from Guerlain. Unfortunately discontinued, but this one is so beautiful in autumn because it opens up with almonds, like almond milk, almond nut. It's nutty. It actually more than the nut, it smells in the opening of the fluffy skin coat of of the almond, you know. So when you kind of crack the almond and then inside you get that kind of brown almondy moment with the fluffy skin and if you soak them in water overnight then the next day you can kind of pop them out and then you get the white almond. Well, this smells of that skin of the almond, not the shell the furry skin. So there's a warmth to it, very particular oily type of quality to it, but then the tuberose kicks in and it gives it a floral uh, moment as well. It's very fascinating combination. And so again, it's a warm tuberose. Usually tuberose, you know, it can go into that cold territory. Not this one. That's why it's so gorgeous. So, so gorgeous for autumn because it's a warm tuberose fragrance. It is discontinued, Tina. Yeah. Pulp. <laughs> right, Jesus? Yeah, it's pulpy. The heart wants what the heart wants, says Jetta above clouds. Uh, Jet above the clouds. So this is my number three. Gorgeous. Really gorgeous. If you can if you can get your hands on it, it's not an easy one to love. It's a particular type of smell. Very complex. It changes a lot. Uh, and I will give this one a proper review as well soon. Next one is another chanel now this one listen you guys this one is actually easy to guess because i think every autumn i am obsessed with this one i i, I think i've i don't remember if this was in my list last year but pour monsieur eau de toilette not the eau de parfum the eau de parfum is a fougere right the eau de toilette is a sheet rub and boy oh look at that almost empty Cardamom, ginger, oak moss, a hint of labdanum. Oh my gosh, this thing is to die for, to die for. 
Again, very intelligent how it rides that wave between warm and cold. It starts off cold with the Sicilian bergamot, that citrusy, refreshing accord in the opening notes. But as it dries down, it becomes warm. And that oak moss, there's a hint of sandalwood in there as well. It becomes warm as it dries down, the cardamom and the ginger. So the cold and the warm aspect, again, that typical thing that you have in autumn where it can be super cold at night, but kind of warm during the daytime. Oh my gosh, this thing. Seriously, seriously. Uh, Pour Monsieur by Chanel, Eau de Toilette. We have to open a new bottle soon. That one, that was my number four, right? Number five. Okay, you're never going to guess this one. Oh yeah, Jet Above the Clouds. Oak Moss can be really, really amazing. Uh, listen, the ATL says cinnabar, cocoa, and opium are my fall winter ambers. Interesting. You know, opium, usually for me, opium is kind of in my, pardon me, is in my winter list. But sometimes it also makes it into, into autumn, like late autumn, opium. I'd become obsessed also with the body cream and the pure perfume. Speaking of opium, right? Uh, if we talk about opium, we talk about Yves Saint Laurent. Now, there is an Yves Saint Laurent fragrance that you would think usually goes really well in spring. But, obsessed with this one right now in autumn. And, um, don't know if anybody would guess this one because it's also unfortunately discontinued. But, it's Rive Gauche pour Homme. Jeez Louise, how much I love this one. It is so beautiful. So, so, so delicately. I mean, it's in a metal container and, you know, it's kind of all, this one's old. It's been this one. It's all kind of beat up because I travel with it a lot and it always gets dense. Uh, as, as I, but I, you know, it's a, it's a friend of mine. It's a dear friend of mine and it goes everywhere I go. So it kind of gets beat up. That's fine. I also get beat up too. <laughs> Pour Monsieur, uh, all the toilette is not discontinued. Yes, barbershop classic jizzes, but oh my gosh. That delicate, delicate patchouli in here. Mm. Delicious, delicious. So beautiful in autumn. It gives you a clean, with a hint of warmth vibe. Again, you see, this is kind of this light motif that we're having in this selection of fragrances. We always go into this. Yes, we're going into colder weather, but we still have a memory of summer. And the memory of summer is also given to us through these streaks of warmth within cooler fragrances. Rive Gauche uh, pour Homme is a beauty. Beauty. <laughs> Not beat up since time. A little bit. She's, she's been around the block a couple of times. So there's that one. Now the next one is... Uh, Listen, uh, I'm not a particularly, you know, I, I'm a, hmm, how do you put this? I'm, I'm not a religious person, but I am soulful and I am a spiritual person, right? So when I say this takes us to church, I don't mean it in the literal sense. I mean it in the emotional sense. I mean, this perfume takes me to church in the, in the sense of it grounds me. Um, it makes me reflect upon the end of some, because the year is ending, you know, as autumn comes in, we're, we're reaching the end of the year. So this one takes me to church. Yes, Jesus, you guessed it. Avignon, or as Jesus likes to call it, Hauvignon. Yes, Avignon uh, by Comte de Garçon, the incense series. What is it? Series three? Yeah, series three. Beautifully blended, delicate grounded incense but, but with hope in the air and it makes you reflect upon what you have done in the year it's it's a harvest type of incense you know because as autumn comes and halloween approaches and the harvest season approaches not many incenses deliver a harvest type of mentality this one does of of the five incenses that uh, comme de garçon offers us Avignon is the most harvest ready type of, you know, Zagorsk is a very winter type of incense, but, and Jasalmer is very much April 
spring. But Avignon is beautiful, beautiful in autumn. Um, it smells divine. Beautiful incense. Gosh, I love this one. I hope Comte de Garçon never discontinues it. The next one for autumn. Let me tell you where it's at. Um, and also, actually, quite sad story. I, if if I'm right about what's going on with this next perfume, then I'm really sad. But anyway, the next one is a Dior. I have not been to Avignon, PhD, a uh, PJD. Sur les ponts d'Avignon, on y danse, on y danse. Okay, so that's a little song, little song, little song, little song. Um, Au Noir by Christian Dior, the Francis Courjan re-release. Now, why am I saying it's kind of... Look, I've been using this one. Check it out. Yeah, this one was just launched in the big bottle. I mean, in the little bottle in July, limited edition, but now in the 125 mil in September. Oh, gorgeous. It's just gorgeous. Yes, it's simpler than it used to be, than its green counterpart. But here's the sad twist. I just found out on the Dior website that next to this perfume, also next to Cologne Blanche, coincidentally, it says limited edition. That's not a good sign, <laughs> you guys. Now, I know the limited edition stands next to the little trio set, the 40 mil Au Noir, 40 mil Cologne Blanche, 40 mil Bois d'Argent in the set of three. Like, I get it. That's a kind of a limited edition set of three. But I didn't think that this one is going to be limited edition. So if it's true that this is a limited edition, then I went to the French Dior website to see what they offer. In fact, what is so fascinating, they're offering the green one as well. It's still available. I'm like, why would they keep the green one available if this is the new version of Noir in yellow? And then I read that it says limited edition next to this one. And then I thought to myself, oh boy, does this mean that this is a limited edition and it's going to be gone soon and the green one is going to stay just for France and Europe? In the 250 mil bottle only? I don't know, you guys. Something is... I'm worried. Maybe they wrote limited edition by accident next to this one. They also wrote limited edition next to Cologne Blanche. I would be really sad if we're, we're all happy that it's back and they're going to take it away from us again. So I'm just saying, just, think, just to be, maybe they're doing it as a marketing ploy to make us buy more. Oh, thank you for becoming a, uh, a patron. Vicky Ricky. I'm just saying, you guys, just be safe. If you want your Au Noir and you have it available at your Dior boutiques now, get it now. Don't poker it out too long. It's such a beautiful perfume. I love this yellow version for autumn this year because it really goes very quickly into the dry down. Okay, it doesn't play with you in the opening notes like the green version does. This one goes into the burning woods right, right away. There's no poetry there in terms of like, let's see how we get to the burning woods. No, it's like, these are the burning woods. Here they are. And I, yes, it's simple in a way, still more complex than many other perfumes out there, but quite simple. But I love it so much in its current formulation. Also love the old formulations. I love all the iterations of Onoir really, but It's gorgeous. It's just so beautiful in autumn. It's almost like when I wear this and I go out, I feel like I'm walking on over all the crunchy leaves that have that have that have fallen down on the ground, and everything is you know the green is fading to brown, orange, yellow hues, and this is giving me those vibes. So beautiful, very very autumn, in the yellow version. So definitely. One of my top tens for autumn. The next one. Now we're going into more substantial. Oh, you want to smell that? Cyber Coke, I think it's coming to Australia. I mean, it's already in Australia. I, you just got to go to a Dior boutique that carries them. No, I thought it already arrived to Australia. Now, the, for the last three, we do have, I think last three, right? Because we did one, two, three, four, five, six. 
Oh no. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah. Okay. The last three. We're we're going into the darker. Now we're going towards the end of autumn as winter approaches. Now we're going into late deep autumn. One of the loves of my life is it's a Chanel. It's a 31 Rue Cambon Eau de Toilette version. Um to die for. Now I have several bottles of this, so you know, in every video when I show my 31 Rue Cambon, I'm gonna show you probably another bottle, but anyway, um I think you can see through it. It says Eau de Toilette in the back. Oh my gosh, so complex, beautiful. It's an haute couture fragrance, seriously. It is the most complex of Chanel perfumes. It goes deep, it's very patterned, textured, layered. It, it, it's majestic and it is complicated, just like the end of the year, you know. Autumn is a complex uh, time of year as well. So this is like a beautiful tweed coat that you wear towards the end of autumn. It, it's just that it's that simple and that beautiful. It is a very modern day floral chipra. Um, so it delivers a lot of nuances. It, it can be considered, some people don't even call this one a chipra, but it is. And you can give it so many different moments in time. This is beautiful to wear during daytime when the weather is kind of chilly outside and you're wearing your cardigan and your jacket and you just feel your oats. But it can also be worn to a wonderful, beautiful dinner, date at night in a fancy restaurant. Then you dose it a little bit lower. You tone it down. You wear a little bit less of it. And it, it creates the mood and the aura of something luxurious and voluptuous. But then it can also be worn as a very comforting, soothing scent uh, when you go to bed. Just spray it from a distance on your bed sheets. Not Don't puddle spray it from a distance. And it gives you that soothing, cuddly, warm embrace when you go into bed. It makes you feel feel all warm inside. So it's a beautiful fragrance to wear all the day, throughout the day. You just got to know how to dose it differently according to what you need it for. But autumn is the time to wear this one. Love it to bits. It's getting darker. The days are getting shorter. It's late, late autumn. And we are definitely approaching that final stage of, you know, analyzing what we've achieved throughout the year, the, the ups and the downs, and the year is coming to an end. So it's almost, it, 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 it's the year is dying, right? A new year is about to be born, but before the new year comes, we're still in autumn and we're dealing with stuff. <laughs> so we got Ensemble Mythique by Guerlain. This Ambergris concoction, potion, lotion, honey. Um, Letty, the EDP is fine as well. It's fine as well, for sure, yeah. But the EDT, if you can hunt it down, you know. Oh my gosh, so this one is, uh, it's a dusty rose with a natural ambergris at the base. So this one, this one goes really deep into the dungeons of the end of the year. <laughs> this one, it's a guerlain that, um, you see the gray hue and the gold. It's literally like the bottle itself. It, uh, it, it makes you contemplate and ponder the end of something. Um, but it also, it's kind of a depiction of the infinity of sadness. Uh, it, it's a really, really beautiful perfume. Very autumn. Very, very autumn-y. Very, also very Halloween. Uh, you should also check out my selection of my top 10 Halloween perfumes. Um, but anyway, this one is gorgeous. So that's my number nine. And number 10... Oh, Nina, this was Ensemble Mythique. There you have it again. Somebody missed it. Ensemble Mythique by Guerlain. The last one is the most intense of all of these. It's, it almost has an oily consistency, and it really announces the end of autumn, beginning of winter. 
beautiful fragrance, dreamy, moody, almost like a chemical substance that uh, we cannot even talk about on the tubes, honey, but it smells of something, something. And that would be Yves Saint Laurent's Noble Leather. Where can I? There it is. Noble Leather by Yves Saint Laurent. Unfortunately discontinued. Yes, all the best ones always are. This is a magical potion. Oh, look at that gold. Cha and look at the just. Look at that gorgeous, ambery, dark juice inside. Look at this thing. I know it's half empty already. I'm so sad. Um, leather, saffron, dried fruits, vanilla, patchouli. My mouth waters. <laughs> this is comforting, soothing, but it's also aggressive. It tells you, I'm going to give you the right energy to get through winter. It's like the end of autumn, and it's giving you the kick to say, you know what, cold months are ahead, really short days, depressive moments, but you know what, you're going to get through this because I'm going to give you the fire, the spark that you need. It's, let me tell you. It's uh, such an energy booster. This thing is uh, a mood booster, an energy booster. It's it's amazing. It's just... Yeah, you got to wear this one with a warning. This thing... Um... Oh, my God. My mouth is watering just smelling this. I, I kid you not, you guys. This thing is very potent, very powerful, and um, beautiful. Just beautiful, beautiful. I want to say... In its weird, powdery, but also vanilla patchouli way, it all, it, 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 because of the saffron and the dried fruits, it almost has like a gourmand quality to it. It's not a gourmand, but it goes into that incredible realm of dried candied fruits. It's not sweet. <laughs> But but then it also burns up in leather. So there's like it's very sensual, very sexual as well. It's 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 wonderful. This this is a type of autumn fragrance when it's really cold outside towards the end end of autumn, where when you wear this, you really feel like, you know what? It doesn't matter what the weather is out, you know, I'll get through this. Literally, this perfume gives you that vibe, like, you know what, we'll get through it. Okay, we'll go, we'll go. So basically, those would be my top 10, you guys. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Um, let me know your top 10 in the comment section down below, or top 5, or 6, or 20, whatever you like to use in autumn, because it's always nice for the community to share so that we get to learn also from each other. Maybe we find out some other perfumes that, you know, we didn't know about because somebody says, hey, you know what, this one is really good for autumn. I love to use it a lot. And then if I get a chance, I sniff it, and I'm like, oh, yeah, it's really good. I want to try it out too, and stuff like that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, thumb it up. Never give up on love and subscribe.